At 65 years old, Godzilla is a series that spans over 30 live action movies, along with several TV show adaptations and even its own anime trilogy, but those are just the projects that did get made. How about all the projects that didn't? Well, today for this super long video, we're going to be looking at every single one of them, starting off with the original concepts for Godzilla, all the way to Hidora vs Midora, which apparently featured Godzilla but I'll get into that in a very, very long ass time. Speaking of which, we are going to be covering a hell of a lot of movies, so I'm gonna start listing here on screen all the different timestamps for each different movie if you're only interested in looking at one or two of them, so you don't have to go through every single one. So with that in the background, I'm just gonna explain why I'm doing this video, and it's essentially just to see what people want to know. If you have an idea for a franchise for me to cover, please do leave a comment down below and if this is the kind of content you want to see, please do leave a like and subscribe because wow, this video took me a very long time. I also have to state if you're interested in just watching certain eras, there are four other parts to this I split up into different sections, previous videos of the past month. So please do check those out as well. So before we get into the super long video, I'm just going to mention some kind of ground rules and the first thing I can need to mention here is that if there is a film which has been rumoured to be made but there are absolutely zero sources, I'll probably give them a slight mention but they will not have their own section because I don't want to waste a lot of time since it's already about 70 minutes long at this moment doing tons and tons of other very minor films which never even got to the concept phase. So. Let's probably start off now with the original version of Godzilla. To start off, there are earlier versions of the original Godzilla film, with the ghostly whale that came from the sea to attack Tokyo, and the giant monster from 2000 miles below the sea, both by Etsy Tsuburaya. But I will be covering them properly as they're not really Godzilla movies yet, but I did feel the need to give them a quick shout out, as without these ideas, Godzilla would be a very different monster movie to how it is today, and these movies essentially set the groundwork to allow Ishiro Honda to create his Godzilla movie. But anyway, let's continue. Shortly after Godzilla Raids again, Toho wanted to make a third Godzilla film, and hired Hideo Uganami to write the film. It centred around the return of Godzilla and Angoras, who attack cities because, you know, they, that's what they do. A scientist builds what's called a robot daughter made in the likeness of his foster daughter to battle them. The film introduces the idea of a hollow earth, something which would later be used for Rodan and even 2019's Godzilla King of the Monsters, where many Godzilla and Angress monsters live with mermaids. The film also introduces the Mega Nulongs, which went under Rodan, as parasites. The robot daughter battles them, breaking Angress's jaw like in Mecha Godzilla. Godzilla falls in love with a robot lady, because now we're apparently in the King Kong movie, taking her into his lair and then she turns out to be a nuke and kills him. Yeah, the film's batshit insane and honestly I'm not shocked it wasn't made. Apparently it was cancelled due to the film's creators not wanting another Rush sequel, which is fair enough. Honestly though, this concept just seems way too out there, even for a franchise focused on a dinosaur which, like, breathes atomic breath. The writer ended up going on to make a film called H-Man, so good for him. And the film even got a sort of redraft in the 1970s, but really not much is known about that version except it was on the table at some point. And it, the film itself may have influenced the giant sea louse, which ended up in the return of Godzilla or Godzilla 1985. Volcano Monsters is essentially what Gigantus the Fire Monster, the United States version of Godzilla Reds again, became. The film was just going to turn all the Godzilla fight scenes, with him versing Angerus from the original film, and you have brand new footage centred around it, so it's essentially like watching a clip show with just a bunch of stock footage, but the film itself is going to be brand new. Toho did seem to like the idea, at least from a financial standpoint, and they signed off on the project, even sending the production company a Godzilla and Angerus suit for new footage. That's how much they cared. But the company went bust and the suits got lost, so the film was never made. Instead, we got Gigantus the Fire Monster, which somehow actually seems like a lesser of two evils, but still, little is very actually known about the film's storyline, but it did seem to shake Toho's confidence as their next kaiju movie was Baron, which was as cheap and rushed as they come, and honestly it wasn't really until Mothra 
when they started to show care for the kind of monster movies that they used to make. King Kong vs. Frankenstein and King Kong vs. Prometheus are very weird films and the only reason why I'm mentioning this is because of what they led to. Now originally Frankenstein vs. King Kong was seen as a direct sequel to the 1933 King Kong movie, which in itself is really fucking weird because it removes the Son of Kong from the timeline, it brings King Kong back from the dead somehow, and I know it's a Frankenstein plot which is all about resurrecting the dead, but how fucking weird is that as a concept? But even stranger, the idea itself was stolen. Like, as in, the concept itself was stolen. The original idea was to have two of cinema's greatest monsters battling each other, something we've heard thousands of times before with Godzilla fans. No one wanted to make the film though, and the concept was eventually sold to Toho, who ended up splitting the movie into two concepts, which ended up becoming King Kong vs Godzilla and Frankenstein vs a Human Vapor, which in itself has its own massive complicated issues, which I will go through in a couple of entries. Continuation King Kong vs Godzilla was essentially just a sequel to King Kong vs Godzilla. Not much else is actually known about the film and Toho scrapped it very quickly at one point for really unclear reasons. It's rumoured that the film's budget was actually quite high but nothing's ever been fully set in stone. The script never even got leaked to the public, we're not even sure if the script was fully finished or even started writing so literally nothing is known about the film's plot so that's literally it. The film didn't get made for some reason so Toho decided to go back to her idea of making a Frankenstein movie which leads us into the next entry. Now for Frankenstein vs a human vapor or Frankenstein vs Godzilla as it ended up being, this is where things get really complicated. The original concept for Frankenstein vs a human vapor would have been a direct sequel to Toho's The Human Vapor, with Ishiro Honda even attached to direct the film but it was very suddenly and quietly cancelled by Toho for unknown reasons and reworked into Frankenstein vs Godzilla. Maybe it was just that the human vapor was a very unknown character and we need to use something a bit bigger, but even at this time Godzilla wasn't the big box office groundbreaker he is nowadays, so it's still a bit of an odd idea. The film was originally seen as a sequel to King Kong vs Godzilla, as well as possibly the 1930s Universal Frankenstein movie, which is so confusing because once again, Frankenstein died and all the Universal sequels acknowledge this. The film ends up being very loosely reworked and releases Frankenstein vs Baragon, which is not a direct sequel to that film, with many of the plot elements kind of staying the same. However, Frankenstein vs Godzilla would have had one big difference. Godzilla was the hero. Well, technically anti-hero, but this would have been the first time that Godzilla was actually portrayed as a heroic character, something which wouldn't happen until next year's Godzilla and Ghidorah movie. But the final version of Frankenstein vs Baragon ends up also changing this by having Frankenstein as the hero, whilst Baragon was the villain. But despite being a sure thing, Toho just wasn't sure about Godzilla being portrayed as a heroic character yet and decided to put Godzilla up against Mothra instead, which was released a couple of years prior to really good rave reviews leading to a fan favourite Mothra vs Godzilla, one of my personal favourites too. So, in the end, for this very complicated series of events, it did end up with two pretty decent films. Godzilla vs Batman and King Kong vs Zabira is the first time, but definitely not last time, we have two very different films which have nothing to do with each other, but trying to release the same year. Firstly is King Kong vs Zabira, which was essentially Ibera Horror of the Deep, the seventh Godzilla movie, but with King Kong as the main kaiju instead of Godzilla. Most of the film is exactly the same right down to the plot, with the only major difference being that Godzilla used his atomic breath to kill Ibera, whilst in the original version, King Kong was going to use his brute strength. Batman vs Godzilla though is a very strange concept, with some even stating that the film was never real to begin with, but there's a lot of conflicting reports on this, with even Toho changing her opinion at times, so we're going to roll with it. The film would have focused on the supervillain controlling Godzilla to cause mayhem, leading to Batman stopping the villain. Then Batman, Batgirl and Robin using vehicles and gadgets to stop Godzilla. Batman even climbs up Godzilla, plants a bomb on him and knocks him out so the Japanese can build a spaceship around him 
and sent him into space. By the way, this is not the last time we hear of people basically making Godzilla into a rocket ship, but we'll get to that in a good few years' time. Now, I'm not a Batman fan by any stretch, the only real Batman movies I like is the Tim Burton duology, but I am very sad that I didn't see this at some point in my life. Literally nothing else is known about the movie, including its cancellation, apart from its writer being a Japanese writer instead of an American one, who wrote a lot of the other Shower Godzilla movies, and Ibira being the first Godzilla film released in 1966. But there was also apparently an American version of the film with an American writer, but even less information is on that one, apart from that it involved Batman and Batgirl fighting Godzilla. This is a very complicated thing, and very little is known about the project, but for what is online, it's very interesting to read and I would definitely recommend that some people can check it out. The All Monsters Attack Directive was essentially the precursor to Destroy All Monsters, which would have featured a very different human plot and a lot more monsters. Literally nothing else is known about the film apart from it being cancelled due to budgetary problems, and only Monster Island from the original concept actually ends up in the film. Honestly, it sucks this version wasn't made. I personally have a massive issue with Destroy All Monsters. I do not like that film at all. The sci-fi plot is boring as hell and the light of all monsters is, well, it's a lie. And this version sounds like a huge shame to have lost, but I do understand from the monsters perspective, cutting a lot of them out, why it was done for budgetary stuff. Because at this time, this was the most expensive Godzilla movie and it really was depending on the box office success since the rest of the franchise wasn't doing well. It is a shame though, because this movie sounded like it could have been awesome and I really wish that in some other reality, this version was released instead. Kicking off the 1970s, we have what I like to call the 1972 fuckery. Now, let's just start from the beginning. Godzilla vs. The Mutant Starfish was the first idea for a direct sequel to Godzilla vs. Hedora, with a giant mutant starfish replacing Hedora. The film would have focused mainly around pollution but was cancelled by the film's creator who wanted to do Godzilla vs. Hedorah 2. The mutant starfish would apparently later go on to influence the toxic starfish in Rebirth of Mothra 2, as well as gets its own fan name. Shortly after that concept fell through, we got Godzilla vs. Hedorah 2, which would be exactly what it sounded like, another absolutely insane 1970s Godzilla film focused on Hedorah. The film got cancelled due to franchise producer Tomiyuki Tanaka, apparently really hating Godzilla vs Hidora and ended up firing Banner, the film's director. Banning him from ever making another Godzilla film, although Banner himself would try to resurrect his project many times before his very, very untimely death as I will cover later on. Although he did end up helping create the Monsterverse, so that's one thing. Godzilla vs Red Moon is a very strange film which may have influenced two completely different movies. The concept was a collaboration between Toho and Tsuburaya Productions, a company formed by Etsy Tsuburaya who helped make the original Godzilla film. Stop me if you've heard this one before, but a flying kaiju and a walking kaiju meet up and mate. Their child is killed by a human, causing them to rampage even more than they already were doing, with Godzilla appearing basically last minute and killing them both. So yeah, it's Godzilla 2014, but some fans even speculate that another Toho and Super Eye Productions film was made because of some not being created, although there's very little evidence of that, but who knows, maybe this film did end up being made as two completely different movies, and that's a pretty cool idea, since I'll be honest, reading the concept of this film, it's a good one, and I can tell why Toho really wanted to use it, at least at one point, in the Godzilla franchise. Godzilla vs the Space Monsters Earth Defense Directive is not only a pretty badass title, which would have been a pretty badass film, I mean, it featured Godzilla, Angerus, and a new kaiju called Majin Tuol going against King Ghidorah Gigan and a new villain, Megalon. The film centered around the building of Godzilla Tower in a theme park by some alien, so yes, it was essentially split into two different films, with Godzilla vs Gigan taking most of the film's plot and characters, whilst Godzilla vs Megalon took the scraps of the film and swapped out Magino Tool for Jet Jaguar, but the film was pretty much both those but on a much bigger scale. It sounded a lot better than the two films we got as well, especially much better than Godzilla vs Megalon, but it is understandable as Toho kept slashing Godzilla film budgets as much as they bloody could in the 70s. 
Still, it sucks and sounds like a pretty great concept. Some fans even speculate that Majin Tuo would have ended up kind of becoming King Caesar as they're both statue-like characters, the both statue-like kaijus, and it's a massive shame that it didn't end up being used properly because it kind of would have saved the back end of a shower period before Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla. But pretty much everything in this film was eventually used, which is a good thing because at least nothing was wasted. The return of King Ghidorah was essentially the second version of Godzilla vs Space Monsters, but with Majin Tuol, Angrus, and Megalon being completely written out. Replaced by Rodan and Varan on Godzilla's team, with another dragon kaiju called Mogu replacing Megalon. Apart from that, it's a pretty similar plot. Godzilla Tower and all, but it does have some new abilities for Gigan. The title for Return of King Ghidorah will be used for both the next treatment of Godzilla vs Gigan, as well as another cancelled project in the Heisei area. The title eventually sort of got used with the German title of the third rebirth of Mothra film, Mothra King Ghidorah Returns, so hey at least it did get used at some point. Godzilla vs Gigan The Return of King Ghidorah is the final cancelled version of Godzilla vs Gigan to end up being scrapped. This time swapping Varan and Rodan for Angerus and a larval Mothra, with Mogu being swapped once again for Megalon. Meaning that overall, only Majin to all was not going to return from the original version, and the only real change from this film to the final version is the removal of Mothra and Megalon, with most of the plot staying pretty close to the original. There's a couple of points being moved over to Jet Jaguar vs Megalon, aka Godzilla vs Megalon, but this version was written by a new writer, with the title of the final film being Godzilla vs King Ghidorah, Earth Attack Directive before being changed very last minute by Toho to Godzilla vs Gigan. Once again, big shame and apparently the only reason why these three concepts were cut is just solely on the budget. They didn't have enough money to fully flesh out this kind of concept, which is why it ended up being split into Godzilla vs Gigan which had a higher budget and Godzilla vs Megalon which had basically no budget, which I will get on to now. In 1973, Jet Jaguar vs Megalon was a concept. The plot is basically the same as Godzilla vs Megalon, but not much else is known about the project apart from Godzilla and Gigan being brought in quite close to last minute with a very rough revision of the script leading to a finished film, which honestly isn't too shocking since neither like Godzilla or Gigan are very big players until the final fight, and if they were written out, it wouldn't seem too out of place in the film. For the next two films, Giant Monsters Converge in Okinawa, Showdown in Zampinski, and Showdown in Zampinski, Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla, the plots really don't change much. It focuses on some ape-like aliens who create a robotic monster to attack Earth. The main difference is that Giant Monsters Converge also involved a lot more Angrus as well as Mothra, with Mechagodzilla even getting a different name. Now for the second version of it, Mechagodzilla gets his proper name, Mothra is swapped out for King Bolgan, Gigan teams up with Mechagodzilla, and Angerus still plays a huge role. The film mostly differs from the final project by these monsters, as well as the film's title both being changed. The film obviously was eventually called Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla, with Angerus only appearing at the start of the film, Gigan being cut out completely, and King Bolgan being reworked into King Caesar. This concept did sound pretty cool, but I can see why it was cut down. The simplicity of Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla is one of the best parts about the film, and this does seem a lot like a big cluttered convergence once again, similar to the last two movies, so it is understandable why they did this for both budgetary and storyline reasons. To end the shower era, I wanted to talk about the original version of Terror of Mechagodzilla, which isn't very different to the final version, but had one pretty huge difference. Titanosaurus was not in the film, with a working title rumoured to be Godzilla vs the Titans, which would have had two Titan creatures instead of one. They could encircle around each other's necks to become extremely powerful, but it was cut down for budgetary reasons, which would have been awesome to see, but once again quite understandable, especially when the film ended up massively underperforming and killing off the franchise. Personally, I liked the film, but this little extra addition probably could have actually helped it when it comes to box office numbers. Now, I will start off by saying SOS Japan Godzilla's suicide strategy may not even exist. It was mentioned extremely briefly as a concept on one of the old creator's blogs, and the only other bits of information being on the Japanese Wikipedia articles for Gigan and a new monster called Chameleon. Not much else is known about the project except for those two monsters, and 
the fact that they were involved and Godzilla was apparently going to be killed off by the end of the movie, but it's still not got much information, which is why I'm kind of skipping past it, and even the title sounds a little bit too made up, even for a franchise which has the full title for GMK. Another little thing I want to mention is even though it's not Godzilla related, I have to mention Nessie, which would have been a film made by both Toho and Hammer Films. You know, Hammer Horror, the British company made the amazing Dracula series, and it was going to focus on the Loch Ness Monster. Why the fuck was this not made? This is exactly what I want for a British kaiju movie. But didn't get made, was very early in development, and just got scrapped because the two studios couldn't work together essentially. Now, Rebirth of Godzilla was essentially going to be a direct remake of the original 1954 movie. Apparently it was also going to have an Americanized version as well, similar to Godzilla King of the Monsters from 1956, but not much else is known except it was going to be a massive reboot for the series and remind audiences why Godzilla was such a huge property to begin with. Literally nothing else is known apart from it was going to be in colour, was going to be a very close remake, but that's it because the project did fall through sadly, which is a shame because I have some very big personal issues with the original film for its plot and all that kind of stuff, and seeing an updated version from the 70s would have been really good to flesh out the characters better and flesh out the overall storyline. This film would have been a direct sequel to Terror of Mechagodzilla and War of the Gargantuans, with Godzilla battling against a new Gigantua which may or may not have resembled the Devil. Very little apart from this is known, except the title may have been Godzilla vs the Devil, but this has been denied by Toho, leading to a lot of uncertainty about the film even existing at all. Although in past they have acknowledged it, as well as other people have acknowledged that this film did exist at some point, but from the sounds of it, it was very very early stages and no one really wanted to make it, so it ended up just falling into obscurity. By the end of the 70s we reach the most cocaine fueled era of Godzilla concepts, starting with God's Godzilla, which, yes, God's Godzilla. Jesus is the main protagonist, and Godzilla is Jesus' puppet to bring forth the rapture during World War 3 in the 80s. Not much else is known about the project, even who even created it, but apparently it does exist, there's quite a few sources for this one, and in all honesty this is a situation where I'm actually glad this wasn't made, but at the same time, oh my god, I'm so sad I did not get to see this at some point in my life, because it's so fucking stupid, I have to love it. Up next was Godzilla vs the Asaka Fortress, which was apparently going to be set out to destroy all monsters. Basically the film would have involved Godzilla being sedated and ended up battling against the Asaka Fortress, which was essentially just a giant mech which went insane and began massacring cities, even apparently killing the Prime Minister. Godzilla woke up and battled the mech with the help of some humans and they ended up destroying it. The plot does sound pretty damn good for a Godzilla film, with the film concept apparently being reused later on for another concept, Godzilla vs the Robot Army, which I'll get into for the third part of this video. But one of the reasons why this was apparently cancelled is highly due to budgetary things. Apparently the film was going to be one of the most expensive Godzilla films to date, so Toho, after seeing the massive flop that was Terror from Godzilla, really didn't feel like throwing a ton of money at a project which most likely would not have made much back. Finally, we reach the granddaddy of all and made Godzilla movies, a space Godzilla. Now there is tons about this movie online as the plot was released as a magazine with Toho's consent. There are translations across the internet so if you do want to read the full thing, I highly encourage it because it's a lot of fun. But yeah, essentially this whole time since Godzilla raids again, Godzilla has been a pregnant female who is also an alien from the planet Godzilla. Godzilla's actual name is Roseanne, and we've been calling it Godzilla this whole time to represent its Godzillian race. She has to get back to her home planet because she's dying from diabetes, so some scientists turn her, yes her, into a rocket ship to fly home to her husband. She reaches the planet where a bunch of aliens who lead it is called Gamorne or Gamora, which look a lot like turtles but definitely has no relation to Gamera, and our Godzilla dies, and not Gamera dies too. The end. 
Now, this movie is really fucking weird, and I don't think I'm ever going to insult Godzilla vs. Megalon ever again, but it sounds so much fun and so stupid, I really wish it was made, but at the same time, it's pretty obvious that if this film was made, it would have been a desperate attempt to rejuvenize the Godzilla formula, and the films we get now would have so, so many changes compared to what they ended up becoming that they'd be basically unrecognizable. Or, very simply, this movie would have killed the brand that badly, no one was going to touch it ever again. So, I'm very glad this was cancelled, but at the same time, Toho nearly made it. The script was fully finished, and they only cancelled the film because they didn't want Godzilla's origins to be extraterrestrial. That is it. That is their only reason for cancelling this movie. That's how close we were. Thank fucking god for them not wanting him to be an alien. Reaching the 1980s, we get a really heartbreaking loss for diehard Godzilla fans with Resurrection of Godzilla. It does follow some very similar plot points to what eventually became the return of Godzilla, something that is also important for the next few entries, but the film had one major difference, and that's Bagan. Now, there was a different pronunciation for the character back then, but I'm just going to call him Bagan because it's easier, and Bagan was essentially a shape-shifting kaiju, which is meant to become Godzilla's ultimate enemy, beating out King Ghidorah, but still to this day, has not made a single film appearance for one reason or another. Now, most of the plot revolves around a new Godzilla being woken up by illegal nuclear dumping, whilst Bagan attacks Japan. The monsters battle, Bagan dies, then essentially the return of Godzilla's ending happens, but with a twist. Godzilla falls into the sea, not a volcano, and later emerges in the US to set up another film. Technically speaking, this film was made as the return of Godzilla was made, but after the amount of revisions, if you've seen that movie, there's some huge differences with this. To start as, it's not clear in this version if this Godzilla was meant to be the Godzilla from the 1950s, brought back to life, if it was meant to be a direct sequel to Terror of Mechagodzilla, any of that stuff, whilst the film we ended up getting was a complete reboot apart from the original film, with a brand new second Godzilla replacing the Godzilla from Raids again all the way to Terror. This film's not too clear on that, but this concept is so good just because Bagan's in it, and I'm so sad it wasn't made. Speaking of Americanized Godzillas, Godzilla King of the Monsters 3D was going to be a very, very loose remake of Godzilla King of the Monsters from 1956, according to some places. Whilst personally, I think it was most likely going to be a new Godzilla film that took elements of that film. Little is known about the plot itself, except that it would have been unrelated to the other 15 movies, and the film was conceived by Steve Miner of Friday the 13th Part 2 fame, which, you know, he's done some good work in my opinion, as the first American Godzilla film and it was going to be set in San Francisco, quite similar to Godzilla 2014. Godzilla was going to be stop motion and animatronic throughout the film instead of Sumation, who looked a lot closer to a T-Rex than past incarnations of the character, but the film was scrapped after studios didn't want to spend, and I'm not joking here, $30 million on a kids movie. You know, just looking at Frozen 2, like, costing 200 mil, 30 mil, Jesus Christ. Toho's own Return of Godzilla ended up sealing the film's fate to be cancelled, but apparently bits of the film did influence the original version of Tristar's Godzilla, but that also ended up being scrapped as I'm going to cover in part 4. The group also wanted to produce a new Rodan movie, but that also ends up being scrapped for the same kind of reasons, no one wants to spend that much money on a kaiju kids film, and the project just didn't end up going anywhere, which is a shame, but at the same time maybe a blessing, since this Godzilla did look really, really like a T-Rex. Now finally, to end off this video, the second version of Resurrection of Godzilla was kind of a small re-edit of the original script. This time, there's a new form for Bagan, which is much more satanic, and officially given the character that name. The script was liked enough for Toho once again, and they really enjoyed it, but they decided to revise it and turn it into Return of Godzilla the next year, kicking off the Heisei era of films. Now apparently this was done due to budgetary stuff, by having so many different forms of Bagan, they had to construct so many different suits, figure out ways to change between the suits without it seeming too jarring, and eventually Toho just couldn't really be bothered to do all that, and a simple fact that it cost a lot of money, with a lot of money being lost with Terror of Mechagodzilla, the last film for them, they didn't want to spend so much on a risk, so they ended up doing a much more simple idea with Return of Godzilla, which, honestly, is a film I love, so I'm quite glad that that ended up being as good as it was.
The unmade animated Godzilla film is a very interesting idea which literally has no real information online, no plot details have ever been revealed, with the only real information about the film being the fact that a live action Godzilla movie would have cost 25 to 30 million dollars, like Godzilla 1983, but by making it animated, it cut down the budget a lot. The film was meant to be produced by Henry Saperstein, who did Frankenstein vs. Baragon, War of the Gigantuans, etc., but it just never got made for some reason, which I think is a shame. I did partially enjoy the anime trilogy we got with Netflix, but there was a lot of problems with pacing throughout that trilogy. It could have very easily been one two hour long movie instead of a four and a half hour trilogy, but that's a completely different video in its own right. Now for Godzilla vs the Robot Army, the plot is quite similar to Godzilla vs the Osaka Fortress when it comes to the monster battles, but for the human plot, it is quite different. But a really interesting thing to note here is that the film was written by an American, meaning that it's unlikely in the pre-internet age that he even knew about the Osaka Fortress script, which is really strange because if you look quite deep into it, there's a lot of similarities between the two. It's essentially, in both concepts, a city that turns itself into a mecha and battles Godzilla. The only real difference is that in the original version, the Osaka Fortress, it was just a one robot, whilst in the Robot Army it was quite similar to the way that Destroyer is presented in the 1995 film, where it can split into much smaller robots, thus the title, but can also form together to create one giant mech. Now, apparently the film was planned as Godzilla 3 at some point, but this isn't fully confirmed. The film concept was made at the same time as Godzilla vs. Biollante, but it ends up being released as a movie called Gunhead, which has absolutely no relation to Godzilla. I did decide to watch it before making this video, and it's it's an interesting movie, I'll, I'll say that much. If you've seen Aliens and Blade Runner, you've essentially already seen this movie. You know, just shove a little bit more Psycho Robots in there, and there you go, you've got Gunhead. Now, I also need to mention the original version of Godzilla vs. Biollante, which had some pretty big differences, such as Godzilla not really being the main character in this one, a lot more focus on Biollante and the human characters. The DNA subplot for Godzilla's DNA was completely cut, along with a possible third monster being introduced. Later versions had a very different Super X2, along with the film being a lot more gory and violent, which was cut for ratings reasons more than anything else. I love Godzilla vs. Biollante, and hearing a more gory version just makes me love the film even more. Going into 1990, Mothra vs. Bagrant is a lost treasure to Godzilla fans, as it almost led to a brand new Godzilla universe, similar to the one in the shower era. The film was planned to take place after Godzilla vs. Biollante, but focused solely on Mothra, with Godzilla not even appearing in the movie. Mothra, in this film as well, was going to battle Bagan, who if you remember, was the guy who Godzilla was meant to battle in the original version of The Return of Godzilla. Mickey was also apparently meant to appear at some point in the movie, with the overall plot essentially being reused and reworked in Rebirth of Mothra, with some differences such as introducing the evil Shobijin and Deskadora replacing Bagger. The film's planned sequel would have seen Godzilla going up against Bagger as well, which is what I'm going to mention in another entry's time. But before then, I need to mention Godzilla vs. the Mysterians, which is a very strange one. Very little is known about the film, except it might have been for Godzilla 3, and may have also featured Rodan and Angrus. Now, it was originally written by an American, but not much else is known about the film, with a lot of people saying it probably never existed anyway. Personally, I do partially agree with this. It most likely was just someone's passion project, which Toho saw and declined, but I want to be quite thorough throughout this, so I decided to include it. Now, Godzilla vs. Bagun was originally seen as a direct sequel to Mothra vs. Bagun, as mentioned earlier, but due to that film's cancellation, hardly anything is known about this project. The only thing that's known is the film's title, and that it was scrapped permanently for Godzilla vs. King Kong, as well as the simple fact that the entire reason why both Mothra and Bagun and Godzilla vs. Bagun was never made is because Godzilla vs. Biollante didn't exactly do very well at the box office. Apparently, it only made to American standards $7 million on a $5 million budget, which really isn't good, and in all honesty, I'm quite surprised we ended up getting the rest of the really successful Heisei era after that. Movies are very complicated to make, but seeing what could have been, especially when it comes to Bagan and this connected universe, it's a massive shame. Now, as mentioned, due to the failure of my personal favourite Godzilla movie, Toho decided to remake their most popular Godzilla film with Godzilla vs King Kong. The idea was very quick, as Kong's 
quote unquote right holders, Turner Entertainment, didn't allow him to use the character without paying massive royalties. Apparently parts of the plot were used for Godzilla vs King Ghidorah, most of the idea of turning the enemy kaiju into a cyborg, with that film being made instead of this one. Coincidentally though, at the time, Turner Entertainment were in their own legal battle with Universal of the character's legal owners, an issue Congress had since basically the original film was made, with Universal actually owning the character and Turner only owning the first two movies, meaning that technically Toho could have made this Godzilla movie and the only thing we would have had an issue with is talking to Universal. Turner had absolutely no reason to get involved, but they decided to, to try and get some more money. Now, apparently every 20 years we get some massive Godzilla-like brain hemorrhage because just like in 1972, 1992 was a very messy year for Godzilla concepts. Now, we'll start with the direct sequel to Godzilla vs King Ghidorah with the return of King Ghidorah and told you that title would return at some point, where a new version of Ghidorah would appear. This time Ghidorah was going to be extraterrestrial, similar to the shower version, but the film ended up being scrapped due to a poll which showed that Mothra was a much more popular kaiju, which began the most confusing series of events. First was Micro Super Battle Godzilla vs Gigamoth, where a bunch of humans were put inside of Godzilla by Mechanicon in order to kill him. But a brand new creature, Gigamoth, was mutated, leading to Godzilla, Mechanicon, and Gigamoth fighting whilst humans tried to kill Godzilla from the inside. Now, the film ended up being scrapped completely, but the concepts of Gigamoth, Mechanicon, and the voyage kind of concept were all reused for three very different films. Starting off with Godzilla's Counter-Attack, a title previously used for Godzilla Reigns Again, which features the idea of people being injected into Godzilla due to him being close to melting down. Whilst humans try to stop that, Mechanicong is deployed to attack him from the outside. The idea of burning Godzilla was later reused for Godzilla vs Destroyer, and as I mentioned earlier, there's a lot when it comes to burning Godzilla as a concept. Another one of these concepts is Godzilla vs Mechanicong, which follows a very similar plot but without the burning Godzilla involvement. It was with this concept that Turner, who once again didn't own any rights, said that Mechanicong was too similar to King Kong's likeness and they'll sue if he's used. This led to Toho scrapping this character at, like, just completely, which ended up with our very next concept. AKA Micro Universe in Godzilla, which basically cut out the kaiju action from the outside to focus solely on the scientists inside Godzilla. This was scrapped because Toho really wanted another monster to monster battle. After King Ghidorah worked so well and brought in the most money for the Heisei era so far, they knew they needed to do something like that. And the final concept before the film we got was Godzilla vs Gigamoth, which would have essentially just been Godzilla vs Batra. Mothra was in this version, but in a very, very small role compared to her leading role in Godzilla vs Mothra, and Batra was known as Gigamoth with a very different design. Now, for this film, what's interesting is that the full synopsis is online, so I won't really spoil too much here, but what I do need to mention is that the few differences between this film and what ends up to finish product. Now, for this one, as I said, Mothra is not really that involved in it, whilst in the final version, half of Godzilla vs. Mothra 1992 is essentially a very loose remake of Mothra's solo movie, which is awesome. Little bits of the Mothra vs. Baggins script were also brought in for Batra's scenes, and there were some really big monster changes. In the original version of Godzilla vs. Gigamoth, Mothra was going to die to set up a sequel. Gigamoth slash Batra was going to live, apparently, which is a massive reverse from what happened in the final version, as well as a lot of other just small minor changes when it comes to the character arcs, and it wasn't going to be as adventure Indiana Jones influence as the final version ended up being. Personally, I really, really love Godzilla vs. Mothra in 1992. I know a lot of fans have issues with it, but honestly, it's one of my favourite in the entire series, and I'm very glad with what we ended up with. Now, starting the running trend of the Heisei era having so many concepts, 1993 was also very messy. The first concept was Godzilla vs Mecha Mothra, a concept made very early on when Mothra was still going to die in Godzilla vs Gigamoth, but since she lived, that kind of scrapped this entire movie immediately, as since she survived, they had no reason to bring her back as a cyborg. Up next was Godzilla vs Berserk, which was essentially a very, very early version of Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla 2. The film focused on an alien organism known as Berserk, which infused itself with metal in a very similar way to how Hidora did with pollution. 
Eventually the creature becomes a robotic version of Godzilla, due to noting him as the most powerful creature on Earth. The film also featured the Super X3, which ended up being Godzilla vs Destroyer, as well as this film influencing Orga from Godzilla 2000. As mentioned, the film was reworked a lot into our next entry, Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla Metallic Battle. Now, this is just Godzilla vs Mechanicon's concept reworked with Mechagodzilla instead. It's really not that interesting, and surprisingly a lot more stuff from Godzilla vs Berserk was carried on to the next version than this film, since this idea still had the Voyager style, see it be referenced so much as the original version of Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla, because the only real bits that carried on is the idea of Godzilla's death, which was reworked anyway, and the idea of Junior being involved in this one and dying. Now, both those ideas of Godzilla's death and Junior's death were used for Godzilla vs Destroyer, but not much of this concept, if you look quite deeply into it, was actually used for the final version of Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla 2, which is shocking since it holds the title. But one film which definitely did influence the final version of Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla 2 is the quote unquote original version of Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla 2. Now, many of the elements are exactly the same, especially when it comes to the human plot, the way that Junior is introduced, it's all exactly the same as written down, but one huge difference are the monsters themselves. Firstly, Godzilla dies very early in this concept that was rewritten after like the second draft. Godzilla Jr. would have been a full infinite in the film instead of just being a baby throughout. And there was originally two Rodans, like in the original 1956 movie, with the female becoming White Rodan, aka what became Fire Rodan in the final movie. Now, with all that being said, those are essentially small differences, whilst Mechagodzilla itself was a huge difference. The mech would have been split into several different vehicles, something which was partly used with the Garuda in the final film, as well as what Magura did in Space Godzilla. But with this version, it was going to split into like seven different mechs, which sounds awesome, but this all had to be cut due to budgetary problems. And I understand why, but at the same time, it would have been so cool to see so many different versions of Mechagodzilla. But I do have to state for the first time, overall, for 1993, I would have been really happy with any of the films that we got. I do enjoy the final versions, still seeing a giant robotic Mothra would have been absolutely awesome. Now, 1994 is a much simpler year with Godzilla vs Emperor Ghidorah, which was planned for the franchise's 40 year anniversary as a much more powerful version of King Ghidorah. The film was cancelled very early on though to avoid comparisons to the film Arichi the Airheaded Dragon, which was released the same year, but bits of the film did end up being used for Godzilla vs Space Godzilla, such as the gravity beams actually manipulating gravity and the villain being from space. Now, there are a lot of similarities between this version of the character and what's known as Kaiser Ghidorah, with Kaiser actually meaning Emperor in German, and the character using actual gravity beams in Godzilla Final Wars. Personally, I think it probably was a reused concept, but still, not seeing this movie is kind of a shame since the 40 year anniversary movie we got was good, but not anywhere near as great as the other anniversary films in the franchise. Now, speaking of a 40 year anniversary film, Godzilla vs. Astro Godzilla, also known as Godzilla vs. Crystal Godzilla and Godzilla vs. Neo Godzilla, was essentially an early version of Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla, and if I'd say Godzilla one more time, I'm about to have an aneurysm. The plot is basically the same, but the character has a very different name. Mechia Godzilla is there instead of Megera, and Astro Godzilla has an army of dragonflies because why the fuck not? It's Japan in 1994. Let's have a lot of cocaine boyos. Now, the film was obviously made with Space Godzilla being a little less powerful in the final version without the dragonflies because CGI at the time wasn't exactly the best of this kind of stuff, and Mechagodzilla was swapped out for Megara, mostly due to the fact that Toho didn't think putting Mechagodzilla in there again, since he almost defeated him in the last movie, would have been much of a fair fight, and decided to go for a Mecha which was a bit less powerful, which is why we ended up with Megara. In order to welcome in the new American Godzilla, Toho decided to end the Heisei era in the best possible way, which ended up leading to a total of nine concepts being brought up at one stage or another. There were apparently three more ideas, Godzilla vs Chaos, Godzilla vs Lambada, and Godzilla vs Divine Beast, but I can't find any proper information about them online, so I decided to leave them out as there wasn't really much point in even mentioning them, but I did feel the need to at least 
acknowledge that they were a possible concept at some point. So let's just get straight into this one because it's going to take quite a while. Space Godzilla's counterattack was the first concept and it was very quickly scrapped. It essentially just brings back Space Godzilla for some reason in order to battle Godzilla, but literally nothing else is known about that. The only real record of it is being on Toho Kingdom, making its actual like validity very questionable. There was a couple of other stuff that may have hinted at Space Godzilla returning, but not exactly for this film. So that's just getting kind of a quick mention. Up next is Godzilla vs Giant Monster Varen, which was another extremely quickly dropped idea, which had Varen, who hasn't really appeared in any movie since Destroy All Monsters, be the final villain of a Heisei era. Now, the film's plot is hard to find, but apparently the film was going to be set at the end of 1999, with Varen essentially being an incarnation of the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, with Godzilla and Godzilla Jr. having to stop him from causing the apocalypse. It's really not known if Godzilla was going to die in this version, but it's very hard to track online because there's so little about this movie. It's quite a shame since I really dislike the original Varen movie, but I like the character. I really wish he got given a proper second chance at some point, but at this point, it's really unlikely. Now to talk about the most famous cancelled Heisei film, Godzilla vs Ghost Godzilla, or simply Godzilla vs Godzilla. This sounded amazing. The film basically focused on the spirit of the original Godzilla, which was killed by the Oxygen Destroyer, possibly possessing Godzilla Jr., leading to a battle between the family. The film would have also brought back Anguirus with an amazing new design. Baragon was apparently in one version of the idea too, with a new Anguirus creature also appearing. Ghost Godzilla may have also possessed them, fusing them into a very, very gross creature, which has a name I cannot pronounce, but the film was scrapped due to this being the third film in a row where Godzilla battles a different version of himself, with both Mecha Godzilla and Space Godzilla doing Ghost Godzilla would have been a little bit overkill and it's definitely becoming an overkill on my rhyming techniques. Now luckily bits of his script did end up being used for Godzilla vs Destroyer, such as the idea of concepting back to the original movie with the Oxygen Destroyer and the concept was actually so well liked by the film's director he may have still wanted to make it after Godzilla vs Destroyer as he said in an interview. Personally this is the biggest heartbreak for me because I love the Heisei era, I love the way that throughout it occasionally references the original film, and I love Godzilla vs Destroyer. But this concept of bringing back Angras, who is one of my favourite monsters who gets so underappreciated, it just sounds so perfect and just an amazing way to end the franchise to pass it on to the Americans. Obviously it's a shame the American film we ended up getting, but at the time we didn't know this and this sounded like an amazing send off to the Japanese era. Godzilla vs Bagan almost happened a second time with the film's director confirming this, but it doesn't sound like it went very far into the concept phase. A Bagan suit was constructed though, but it's not 100% known which project it was made for. Still, at least it proves at some point Bagan was a concept Toho really wanted to do as a suit is still being shown in Toho's library and you can find pictures of it online. It's a really cool design and you can see a lot of influence in this actually going for Destroyer, such as with the horn beam. So technically he was made, just not in the way that a lot of fans wanted. Now we get four very odd concepts by Moz designer Kamihiku, with the first being Godzilla vs Godzilla Jr. It would have essentially just seen Godzilla Jr. grow up, realise his dad's kind of evil compared to his much more kind persona, and they have to battle. Not much else to know about the concept except the concept art written. No one's Godzilla vs Deep Sea Life, which was also very quickly scrapped. The only thing of note is that the film would have used the Oxygen Destroyer, such as the final version of Godzilla vs Destroyer did. Godzilla vs Bionic Monster was yet another very quickly cancelled idea. It was essentially just going to be Godzilla vs Frankenstein again, but this time actually have Godzilla vs a Frankenstein monster instead of Frankenstein vs a Godzilla-like monster. And finally it was Godzilla vs Super Atomic Godzilla, where Godzilla would have battled an even more powerful godzilla Saurus like itself, but not much else is known about the project except apparently the Super Atomic Godzilla was influenced a lot by the early concepts of the Burning Godzilla idea. Yeah, these are all kind of cool but weird, you can kind of tell that they were just very quickly drawn up as concept art and not really thought of any bit further, but I personally like some of the ideas, especially Godzilla vs Biomonster because losing Godzilla vs Frankenstein's monster is quite a shame 
and it's a concept that would have been really cool. I did like Frankenstein vs. Baragon, but I just felt there was something lacking by having a Godzilla-like enemy instead of a proper one. Finally, we reach the final cancelled idea, which would have essentially been Godzilla vs. John Carpenter's The Thing, where a brand new monster by Rob Roy would have assimilated and gross, so once again we've got one of my favourites in there, and become a mutant creature that can change its shape. Not much else is known about the film except it's got some very aggressive horror roots in it, and according to some places the film would end with a brand new oxygen destroyer-like weapon being used to kill both Godzilla and Baroboroi. Now the film was cancelled because the creature's transformation abilities would have cost way too much money to try and deploy, but they were sort of reused for the way that Destroyer splits itself into smaller versions, and of course the auction Destroyer being a huge focus for Destroyer's origins. Now I'm really happy with the film we got in the end of Godzilla vs Destroyer, and it is one of my favourite Godzilla movies ever. I love it to pieces and it deserves to go down as one of the best Godzilla films because it ties up so many parts of the Godzilla universe together, even acknowledging and taking bits and pieces from the like cut out shower films. It's done so well and I love the way they did it. And honestly, I couldn't have wished for a better ending. The original idea for what became Godzilla 1998 began in 1992, when Sony bought the rights for an American adaptation from Toho. Terry Russo and Ted Elliott ended up writing the script, with the two later on going to create both the original Shrek film, as well as write most of the Pirates of the Caribbean films. Russo is also currently in charge of the writer's room for Godzilla vs Kong, so hey, at least he ended up with a Godzilla movie at some point. Now, the film follows a brand new creature called Godzilla, who would be tasked with defending the Earth against a monster known as a Griffin. Godzilla would have been a much more of a saviour character, similar to the version in Godzilla vs Hidora and Godzilla 2014, but it would have been artificially created, which is really fucking weird. Yeah, I'm not joking there, I know a lot of people praise this version compared to 1998 and I'm 100% with them, but having Godzilla be, like, created by man is a very odd concept for me. Now, originally the film was meant to come out in 1998, which is why it has the 1998 slot, but ends up being completely cancelled due to one very famous point. Sony did not want to spend $100 million on a Godzilla film. Tell me lies, tell me sweet little lies. But anyway, I'm, I'm not here to discuss the failure, the huge failure of Godzilla 1998, but I will state that the franchise may have been very different if we got this movie instead of the one we ended up getting. Speaking of which... Now, Godzilla 2 was a planned sequel to Godzilla 1998. The film would have followed the characters from the previous film, saving the baby Godzilla scene at the end of that film. A lot of the plot details were later reused with Godzilla the series, so there's not much point going on about it, but it was also meant to get a third film as well. Basically, Sony saw the box office for Godzilla 1998, and it wasn't even close to the heights that they wanted it to be, at around about $500 million. They wanted to make a sequel with a much much lower budget, something that Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin dropped out of because essentially Sony won't give him another 130 million to throw directly in the toilet and then shit all over. So they left, essentially proving the very strong fan theory at the time that they didn't give a shit about Godzilla, they just wanted a quick, quick cash grab in order to get as much money as possible and Godzilla would do that for them. Now, another film concept of the time was just a Japanese King Ghidorah movie. Obviously, they couldn't do a Godzilla film at the time with Sony's movie out, but not much else is known about the project. The only thing that is known is that it was going to be the first solo movie for King Ghidorah, but the film never ended up being made, and it was most likely fused with Rebirth and Mothra 3, although some rumours do state that the thing that he'd be fighting is Godzilla Jr. from the Heisei era, which would have essentially made this the eighth Godzilla movie in that timeline, which sucks beyond so much belief because we, we never got that eighth Godzilla film focused on Godzilla's son and it's a massive shame. I know there's a fan theory about Godzilla 2000 which is fan theory I personally really like but it's never been confirmed by Toho, in fact it's been denied by Toho so it's not very helpful. When it comes to Godzilla reboots, Toho actually had many ideas to reboot Godzilla before Godzilla 2000, such as Godzilla Battling Anguirus, King Caesar, Mechagodzilla, and even Kamonga, but 
Sony also planned their own reboot, starting from scratch and ignoring Godzilla 1998. Obviously, none of this happened, with the franchise continuing with the American version through Godzilla the TV series, and with Toho's Godzilla 2000. There's a lot of interesting opportunities here. Godzilla vs. Komonga would have been awesome if they updated Komonga the same way they did for Godzilla Final Wars. I love that character, I think they're really underrated. And as just a spider on its own, it's inherently creepy to a lot of people. So bringing them back would have been really good in my opinion. Now even though it didn't exactly break the box office, Godzilla 2000 did do rather well. So a writer of the American version of the film came up with a direct sequel titled Godzilla Reborn. The film focused on Godzilla attacking Hawaii and being killed partway through the film by the military, only for them to realise Godzilla was there to stop a new monster, leading to them bringing him back to life. Now Toho did actually approve this project and were fully on board, but did ask that Godzilla was knocked out, not killed. Sony also seemed interested, realising that they still had two more movies under their distribution deal, but upon finding out that it'd be a man in a suit, not CGI, they declined, leading to the project being cancelled. Now, in my opinion, that's really, really dumb of Sony, because they had two more movies to bring out, they could have easily made about 100 mil on this project, easy, if it was a man in a suit, and they wanted to slash a budget anyway, so I don't see the issue. I have a lot of problems with Sony, personally. So I won't get into that, but parts of this film did end up influencing a lot of aspects of Godzilla 2014. The new monster in the film, Miba, was a massive inspiration for the Mutos according to the creature's creator, with the Hawaii scene in the 2014 film also possibly being influenced by this film. Not 100% confirmed because obviously when it comes to America, Hawaii is a very important location for the country itself and for all the country states, but it's still interesting to look at it as very similar to what Godzilla Reborn was going to do, and Godzilla 2014 did it so damn well. In 2001, Toho attempted the third reboot of the Millennium Era after Godzilla vs Megaguirus failed to make much money. Now, originally a film titled Godzilla vs Kamakuras was planned, but dropped due to Toho's worry of having Godzilla go against another insect-like creature, which had previously appeared in a prior movie. Not much else is known about the project, except that it was stylistically very similar to the previous film, as well as being written by Shinuke Kaneko, who previously rebooted the Gamera series to massive critical acclaim for Dai and a huge box office success. Godzilla vs M was another concept created by Kaneko, which focused around an astronaut who gets mutated into a kaiju. The film was apparently going to be very similar in style to Frankenstein vs Baragon, focusing heavily on the emotional damage occurring to the humanoid character. The film was scrapped though very early in development, so much it didn't even get a real title, leading to Kaneko to create our next concept, which is by far the most famous one. Godzilla x Varan, Baragon and Angorus, Giant Monsters All at Attack is essentially the original version of GMK. The film followed the same basic plot as the finished film, with some huge, huge differences. Number one, Baragon was brought back to life for the final fight. The Gatengo from Atragon would have made an appearance which was swapped out for the Satsuma in the final film, with a lot of it staying quite similar with Godzilla being resurrected by the souls who killed by Japan's war atrocities, something I'm surprised stayed in from this concept all the way to the final film. Now, personally, the thing I think is most interesting about this is that this would have been Baron's first appearance in film for 33 years. With Godzilla vs Giant Monster Varan being scrapped for Godzilla vs Destroyer, the character hasn't appeared in any movies to date since 1968. Not one. The only stuff he's appeared in is through stock footage, like in Godzilla Final Wars, but nothing since then, and it's really surprising since the character is well liked, just the films he's appeared in aren't. This would also be Baragon's last film appearance today, and it being another three years until Anguirus' next appearance, who also had not appeared in movies for a very long time, all the way since 1974's Godzilla vs Mechagodzilla. The film has also been referenced a massive number of times, with a lot of fans of the series being very upset of what happened. The modeler for the suits even loved Varon that much, when he designed King Ghidorah's heads, he used a very basic Varon design for them in order to keep Varon in the film in some way. A lot of the comics, such as Godzilla Rulers of Earth, as well as the Godzilla novel Monster Apocalypse, all reference this fight. 
with Baron, Baragon and Angorus all teaming up together to try and battle Godzilla. They lose in both occasions, but also in both occasions Godzilla is wounded in some way. Honestly, there is so much about this film online, I just tell you to check out some other stuff yourself. It was such a massive wasted opportunity from Toho. I will state that GMK worked out pretty good in the end, but this kind of concept of having less and no monsters come together could have really helped the saturation of both King Ghidorah and Mothra. This movie would have been so good. I'm just very glad that it's not been forgotten and stuff like Rules of Earth keeps it in the public consciousness. Up next, I have to mention another huge lost treasure, Godzilla vs. Gamera. Essentially, the studio who owned Gamera approached Toho with the idea, but they declined it. Apparently, this is due to having to split the box office of the other studio, and the original version of the film having Gamera win over Godzilla. Now, this is definitely the saddest What If Godzilla movie, as it would have been one of the greatest kaiju showdowns of all time, but sadly, it's most likely never going to be made, because Toho themselves have got a very negative track record when it comes to owning properties. Now I know the title may be confusing, but oh my god, Toho does not like Angerus at times, and I don't get why. They cancelled his 2001 film replacing with other characters, he was then apparently meant to be in Godzilla x Mechagodzilla, or Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, it was cut out last minute, and then his death cameo in Godzilla Tokyo SOS was swapped out for a monster which only appeared in Space Amoeba. As a fan of Angerus, why did he keep fucking over Angerus? I know he ended up appearing in Final Wars, but that wasn't really much of a role either. I want more Angerus. So, you know, thank you Godzilla King of the Monsters 2019 for trying to include him, even if it's for three frames and he's a dead skeleton, but hey, at least he appeared. Godzilla vs. Deathla was planned as a direct sequel to Godzilla vs. Hidora, with original creator of that film Yotsumi Shibano creating this one as well. The film itself was going to be an IMAX short film at around about 36 minutes long, with Toho agreeing to a contract as long as they did not have to finance the project, as well as having final say on Godzilla's design. The film originally featured Godzilla flying, similar to how he did in Hidora, battling across the United States, eventually ending up in New York, where Godzilla defends the 9-11 monument. He defeats Deathla by blinding the creature, and Deathla itself can also change into locust-like creatures, quite similar to the stuff that we saw in Godzilla vs. Mechagirus, with the film ending up not being made. Instead, Banner decided to revise the script and change quite a few elements, which is our next entry. Now, Godzilla 3D to the max follows a very similar plot, but runs a few minutes longer at around about 42 minutes. It adds some more human characters, including an older cop lady and a young child. The backstory ties into 9-11 because, you know, that's a good idea when you're in New York, with the rest of the plot staying essentially the same. Bano didn't like a lot of the references, so he removed all the stuff to do with 9-11 and ended up changing the final fight from New York to Las Vegas. Now, the film ended up not being made after Legendary wanted to get involved in the project, they intended to make the film's feature length instead of a short film. Due to the contract with Toho, Bano had to let the license expire, and then a new contract with Toho was renewed, this time with Legendary Pictures instead. It kind of sealed the fate of Godzilla 3D to the max slash Godzilla vs Deathla, but because of the film's cancellation, they began work on what ended up being Godzilla 2014, with Bano working as an executive producer. Let's talk about the original version of Godzilla 2014, it had some very, very notable changes compared to the final version. First off, I'm going to mention just some quickfire stuff. The Mutos had different names. The married couple in the film are originally siblings, meaning that their son does not exist because we're not in Alabama throughout this film. Akira Takarada has a cameo, and the scene was filmed and can be found in some places online, but was cut mostly due to time restraints, which Warner Brothers forced Legendary to do. In the original concept, Godzilla was a lot taller at 182 meters tall. This was cut to get it more in line with San Francisco's skyline. The film's tone overall is noticeably darker, much more in line with horror movies, such as when Ford sees a dead child's toy, and Joe Brody, called Nathan Brody in the script, doesn't say goodbye to his wife, instead it gets there too late to see her go. 
Burning Godzilla is also hints that in this version, with Hiroshima playing a much bigger role as a historical event in the film compared to the Castle Bravo nuclear detonations, which is what the final version ended up being. In this version, Godzilla was also found in a block of ice, which is an idea which was later reused for King Ghidorah in Godzilla King of the Monsters. Arguably though, the biggest change itself is Joe Brody. Now if you've seen Godzilla 2014, he's played by Brian Cranston, and one of the biggest controversies with the film, apart from Godzilla's lack of screen time, is how they kill off Brian Cranston's character about an hour into two and a half hour long movie. And what's interesting is in the original version, Joe Brody didn't die. Honestly, this is a massive shock because they have such a big character arc in the original version of the script. It is online if you do wish to read it, and the changes are huge. He's all the way in the movie. It does switch protagonists still from Joe Brody to his son Ford, but with Joe just being there in the background, it feels much more organic, like it's carrying on. Whilst in the final film, it seems to be after Joe Brody dies, Ford's like, oh no, my dad's dead. Well, better make sure that doesn't happen to my wife. It's a very bad move in my opinion, and it's one of the biggest controversies in the film for very good reason, with another huge change being the Mutos themselves. In the final film, it's hinted that their EMPs can stop Godzilla's atomic breath, or at least delay it. But in this version of the film, it's confirmed with the male Muto also being able to use Rodan's shockwave ability, as well as both Mutos being killed in completely different ways. Now for the EMPs, this was used for the novelization version of the film, and it is done rather well in the film of it being hinted at a lot of the time, but just a little bit of confirmation would have been nice. Even so, I do have to say, I really did enjoy Godzilla 2014. I thought it was a really amazing way to bring back the character, to bring back the universe, and to establish a brand new one with Godzilla King of Monsters being an amazing follow-up, Kong Skull Island being a great prequel, and I'm very excited for Godzilla vs Kong coming out November next year. I think another important part to mention though about Godzilla 2012 before we move on to the final film in this series is that it was at this stage in production when Gareth Edwards decided to use the camera techniques used by Banner in Godzilla vs Hidora, basically focusing on a human perspective instead of an anything goes style. So I think it should become a very key element for the Monsterverse going forward, with both Kong Skull Island and Godzilla King of the Monsters focusing a lot on the human aspects, looking at the monsters from those kind of angles instead of the over the top, top down shots like what we've seen a lot in the shower and Heisei eras. Now to end this, I decided to mention Hidora vs Midora, which is essentially the film that Banner was still working on when Godzilla 2014 was in development. It was a direct sequel to Godzilla vs Hidora, with Godzilla apparently appearing in much more of a supportive role, focusing much more on Hidora, and a brand new villain called Midora, which was apparently a good version of Hidora, and Hidora did not like that. Not much else is known about the films except the titles, and it is a huge shame that Banner was never able to make this film, this sequel he'd spent all his life since the original one came out trying to make, before his very, very sad death in 2017. But I think we also need to focus on the positives of what he was able to do. He brought a character who'd been dead for years back to life with the Monsterverse, so his legacy still lives on. And I really, really do hope one day that either in Toho's new Godzilla universe or in the Monsterverse, we see a new version of Hidora to represent the work that Banner tried to do for 40 years. And that's it, congratulations, you got to the end of a 70 minute video, or you skipped most of it, or skipped straight to the end. Either way, if you did get to this point, comment, uh, uh, Godzilla 1998 Fish Iguana, why not? If you, this is the kind of content you enjoy though, since some of you probably did listen to me for 70 minutes straight, definitely do subscribe because evidently at least one person likes my voice, which is, it's a rarity, I'll tell you that much. So, now for the rest of 2019, I'm going to be taking a break. There will not be a video coming out on the 30th. I'm going to have just a nice week off to not focus on anything, and by that, I mean I'm going to be writing my dissertation and finishing it off, 
as well as probably working on all the other videos that are going to be coming out throughout January. Yeah, this has been so much fun to work on and when I published the separate videos building up to this one, which is essentially just a big compilation more than anything else, the support people gave me is so awesome, it's so cool to see a lot more people interested in this kind of content, this kind of lost media. Before this, if you look back at my channel, which most people probably haven't done because I know a lot of people introduced to the channel or only really cared about the channel when I started doing these kind of videos last month. I previously did movie reviews, uh, the original channel Jackson reviews, it just it just didn't work out. There was a lot of stuff going on in my personal life which I mentioned before and just doing it didn't really make me happy and when I brought the channel back now as the horror critics and started doing horror reviews it once again just kind of felt empty and a lot of the editing I found really tedious and boring because it was just me stood in front of a camera and occasionally I'd edit bits of footage on top and it was so boring, it was so draining. But doing this kind of editing style where it's essentially, I get a clip, uh, I do commentary about stuff relating to the clip and by that I mean like the movies which did get made or the movies which were slightly based on this concept. I don't have to do too much editing for it, apart from all the filters, thanks to her, which I'll get into in a minute. And it's just kind of cool, because that way I can actually express what I want to do, and it's nice and simple for me as an editor, because I'm not very good at editing. I mean, sticking a couple of pictures on top of each other was stressful enough, never mind doing proper cool edits. So, seriously, well, thank you for the support, it's been so awesome. Now, I want to have a quick moment just to rant about Toho. I don't know how this video is going to come out. Currently, I've been playing a lot with even more filters to try and give them all their own specific colours and stuff like that because all these solo videos are just solid red. And that did annoy me a lot. If I didn't put that filter on, if any of you have wondered with the past videos, Toho would instantly claim my videos and ban them worldwide. No matter what I did, if it was the most blurry thing in the world, they wouldn't allow it. Now, personally, I highly disagree with that. It is under fair use, at least in the UK terminology of the fair use internet laws that as long as it's being changed in some way and it's not the form that it originally took and it's being transformative then it's legal. Toho didn't allow that and it did piss me off quite a lot because when I filed a counterclaim against them they have to watch the video essentially and see if it is deemed. Toho watched 0 0.01 seconds of the video and I know because they were the only viewer and I can look at the analytics for how long people watched it. So it's dumb and it really annoys me. Hopefully this video has come out without a red filter or even so, even if it's just not for red filter, I've added a bunch of other filters as well to keep variety. Cause I did get a little bit annoyed but I had to constantly do red filter cause I didn't like the blue one either initially. So yeah, fuck Toho, they make amazing movies, but my god as a company, I have my issues with them. But luckily, I don't have to deal with Toho ever again, since it's more than likely I won't be covering any more of their franchises, since the rest of them aren't really Japanese related that I've got planned. A lot of them are very American. There's one uh, British one, which is, you know, just Hammer Films in general, that one's going to be. So honestly, just once again, thank you very much. If you do enjoy this kind of content, do subscribe because I'm really, really enjoying doing this kind of stuff again. And you guys are just so awesome. So have an amazing Christmas and an even more amazing new year. And I will see you in 2020. Goodbye.